matter which side you're on. And there we go. So LeBlanc is that first band. Callista, the first band, naturally on the red side. And Maokai will not be played by Marin or huh. sold this game. Maokai has been a very popular first pick uh, since this season began. We are still on patch 5.8. 5.9 will be coming next week. Yeah, so I'm wondering if SK SKT wanting to prioritize that jungle, just banning out Maokai right away, not having to worry about juggling between Maokai and other jungle priorities. So Cassiopeia banned, of course, that would be a potential first pick here for SK Telecom, and they're not going to be too worried about Azir because Sasin is a known Cassidy player, so they will have some sort of answer for that. Sejuani, not going to be picked up by Tom. Tom uh, has done well on all of the Cinderhulk junglers so far. It's been a great yeah. meta for him. In general, of course, he started out as that big Udir player, so the tank jungle that he meta that he fell into. I'm curious as how he's going to do when the tank jungle meta falls away, but for now, he's just going to be able to first pick that Gragas. No surprise there. And we may see that Lee Sin come back. Catch did play it in game one yes. of their series against Samsung and didn't have too great of an effect with that champion. We see some Lee Sin, but he just hasn't been that successful. Yeah, not as much as in his glory days in the past, but still kind of up there in the top of the second tier junglers. Rek'Sai seems a lot more plausible here. Rek'Sai is still definitely one of the most contested junglers here after Gragas. Okay, so Nar banned. Uh, these days, if you see a Nar banned, it's usually because the team wants to pick the Hecarim. Uh, of course, with the Black Cleaver introduction, the Frozen Mallet Black Cleaver build on Nar is <laughs> extremely punishing in a split push situation. So you just don't even really want to put yourself there. Go ahead, take the Nar out of the pool and grab that Hecarim early. Oh. Oh. I. Okay. Well, I'm assuming they have an answer for Hecarim. Should Marin pick it? I mean, also maybe trying to take the chance that Marin has not been playing Hecarim lately. And they banned Hecarim pretty consistently at MSI. But we know Marin is a perfectly capable Hecarim player. It just yeah. hasn't been the core of SK Telecom's strategies recently. Yeah, prioritizing that Nautilus a lot for Secret, though. Uh, the Alistar not surprising. The Azir, of course, not surprising at all for Easy Hood. So, pretty straightforward from SKT. Yeah, not really showing anything here. Picks that we expect them to take. And now the Fizz hover from Sasa. He did play Fizz into his ear. It yeah. did not work very no, well. The Zed, <laughs> there we go. Now we're talking. Yep, still in 5.8, so definitely pull off some big moves. The Varus. I still miss. I believe it was Imp. Was it Imp and Dandy that had the five man kick into a five man Varus ult? I was a sick believe play. it. Yeah really impressive. I mean, there was an era when the Samsung 80 carries were just really dominating with Varus for a little while. It's very brief time. Very brief, <laughs> yeah. Very brief I time. often hoped that it might come back, but now they're no longer uh, And here. Lulu, okay. Oh, so well. <laughs> we're going to be juggermawing from Spenovin. <laughs> I haven't seen one of these in just a little bit. We haven't seen one yet in Korea this season. And See if Samsung, or Samsung, see, they're doing it to know, me, the SSP, yeah. damn it. <laughs> Chobra. Spenu, Sonic Boom. That's, that should not be allowed. Anyway, we'll see if Spenu can, uh, can pull this one off. It is difficult to team fight well with this team composition, and that's going to lock in the Urgot immediately because the problem with this is that if Kogma is in the front line, he's just going to get grabbed by Urgot here. Oh, so yeah. the Urgot is actually a very powerful counter to a Juggermaw composition, and Rumble might be the last lock-in for some additional mid-game punch. He yeah, also perhaps has a little bit more reach than Hecarim with the equalizer for the backline if need be, or to cut off any of that crazy movement from Kogma. But, I mean, Hecarim can still accomplish a similar thing with Onslaught of Shadows. Yeah, uh, either one is going to be fine right yeah. there. I actually prefer the Hecarim, though, because you have more options as to how you're going to engage. And also, just because that would be loading, I think, too much AP damage into the composition, That's whereas true. Hecarim will balance things out between, because you have the AP jungler and the, the AP in the mid lane, so get a couple AD champions just to make sure that it's a little more difficult to itemize against. So now this Gnar ban doesn't make a lot of sense. Hecarim falling that far down into the draft, third round onto blue side. Probably 
Don't want to ban Gnar if you're just going to let the Hecarim through like that. And will we see a Bard here? Or Bard was banned against Jhaenir in both games yesterday. Oh, yeah. That was kind of interesting. Well, this would also be interesting because that would mean Nautilus top. Which has happened before. Trace has actually yeah. run that. Uh, I mean, I, I not mean. very successfully, <laughs> but he, he, Jhaenir did play Nautilus top. Uh-oh. Yeah, you see the encouragement from the coach. Uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Wow, I wonder if that was all set up for the camera. They're like, <laughs> we're going to fake everyone out to the very end. But it will be Nautilus support and Rumble all the way at the top. And yeah, like you said, kind of interesting that they would ban the Noor and then let the Aircrim go through, especially when it didn't seem like SKT was going to prioritize Lulu or Kogma anyway with their picks. Yeah, I like having the Rumble. At least you have some form of extra damage threat right here. So Kogma isn't the only thing that you're going to be able to put out damage with. And it'll help you get that Kog'Maw into the late game as well by providing more threat just with the equalizer in the mid game. So see if they can pull it off. But it's going to be difficult to play this Kog'Maw, this Juggermaw composition against Hecarim Urgot. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, even Gragas to an extent can really disrupt that and yeah. just bring the Kog'Maw over to you. This is one of the reasons why we haven't seen Juggermaw as much as we used to because now there are so many engage options ever since Cinderhulk came out and we get these junglers like Gragas and Sejuani that can engage, hard engage at range when even though Kog'Maw has this huge range, he still has to walk up close enough that it becomes extremely difficult not to get caught by these yeah. abilities. Makes sense. Well, we'll see if Spenu can pull it off. It's going to be a tough fight, especially against a team like SKT T1. We're ready for game number one, guys. SKT versus Spenu in a best of three. Let's get right into the first one right now. for the first game in the first week for SKT, and of course the second game for Spenu. SKT getting back from MSI. They took a, a week off, yeah. from what I understand. Well-deserved. Well-deserved. So a little bit of vacation time before they got right back into practicing. And they didn't have to play till the last day of the first week. So a little bit of a break for them as well, considering that of course, them and the Koo Tigers did have to play the longest into this season. So nice of the, nice of them to <laughs> OGN to schedule them a little bit later, give them yeah. at least some time to rest. But then there's anarchy. <laughs> it's like you, you punks coming into our league, you get no break. <laughs> two, two days in a row. I mean, they got a win off of one of them. Well, though, not so. to mention that that same week they played qualifiers, exactly. so they had actually what four best of threes in something like five days. Yeah. That was pretty, pretty crazy. Pretty rough schedule. Prince Hoon, or Emperor Hoon, rather. Of course, for Azir, the Emperor of the Sands. And let's see what Tom and Wolf and Bang are going to do right here, if it'll be a simple leash, or whether they're going to try something a little bit more complex. Marin just going to use that smite right at level one, and looks like Easy Hoon will be giving him a little bit of a boost right there with a Sand Soldier, a couple auto attacks. And there is... Bang, <laughs> crab dancing. And they're just in a good mood. It's Bang's birthday and a nice vacation. After a crushing defeat at the hands <laughs> of EDG. True. Could have been a nicer vacation, I'm sure. So, uh, Spenu going to see Freeze right there, not knowing what Bang and Wolf are doing. No XP taken from those crowds, however, so we are all even in lane. Good. Just Getting some auto attacks down right there before Wolf can... Get a minion with that relic shield, and then will be taking his heal right at level one. So pretty farm intensive lane there. <laughs> Marin, you have sweat marks under your arms. That's what that sign said. <laughs> well, it's, it was also a play on words that it linked into saying that they looked like mine, but <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> not going to really get into the whole explanation of that <laughs> play on words, because no matter how you put it, it's not something you really want to get to know. Nice pull by Secret, of course, not going to be too much follow-up with Bang. Don't tell the fans what they want to know, Chobra. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't want to know more about that, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Chobra confirmed selfish translator. <laughs> <laughs> to 
decides which information you get. All these years, it's actually just been propaganda. <laughs> it's just the Chopra propaganda <laughs> machine right here. Uh. You're going back to America now, so you're going to have to get used to freedom of the press again. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, I had my fun out here in the East. Well, don't think this is going to be too exciting. It's not for a while. Azir versus Lulu. Great, fun fi times with farming. Maybe there will be a gank in top lane. Who knows? But in the meantime, Tom's just going to go ahead and get that Scuttle Crab and head back out while Marin wants to put a little bit of pressure on. Bang Wolf will be perfectly happy sitting here under the turret, just slowly last sitting these minions. Well, it could be an early dragon attempt right here, actually, by Spenu. Yeah, they are getting the Scuttle Crab down and bottom. Oh, they, it looks like they just went up towards the river to help in case that catch got caught. And otherwise, all back to normal. Oh, that was a nice gank attempt there from Catch, I guess. Gets a tunnel in. Oh, joy. Yeah. Bang, everything is some damage, but Nuclear also taking some on the way out. Always a danger against Urgot. Well, same goes for Kogma, too, I guess, if you think about it. Nah, I don't want to think about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell you what to think, man. <laughs> That's right. You can only just warp the information that you give me. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Mar just going to go back and get the Gromp right now. And head back to lane. Man, this early game, so exciting. <laughs> Both teams wanting to scale. Juggermaw needs to get some levels and some items onto the Kog'Maw. SK Telecom wants to get a tier onto Bang and then some items onto Hecarim before they engage. So nobody really be doing much of anything. And Ezion just doesn't care who's playing what, needs that farm. Ezion down in terms of CS pretty significantly right now, though. Despite that early back from Sasan yeah. as well, Sasan got the double Doran's rings and then decided to keep on pushing up right there. Spenu has some legitimate chances to just take the dragon right now. There's almost no risk. And if they see Tom on the top side with that ward, it's... Yeah, it's a certainly some, an advantage that they can take considering how passively the bottom lane is playing and the pack, fact that Sasin does have this lane pushed up right here and he's, he's going to have to recall at some point. So, Yeah, part of that CS difference of mid probably also coming from that gank and also probably helps to have that double Doran so that Sasin can be a little bit more aggressive with Harass when he chooses to be. Uh, catch still lingering they, around in front of that dragon. They believe they saw Tom on the top side with the ward, yeah. so that's what's going to prompt the All dragon right. to go down right here. So Catch going to try and solo it, and we are on 5.8, so no dragon buffs quite yet. So it has to be careful in the top side as Sneaky Gank going to be wrapping around from Tom. This is about the only place he can gank right now. It should be just a quick flash blown. He's going to dodge the body slam. And back to normal we go. What an exciting game of League of Legends, Chobra. Oh man, Secret going up to the Dragon. <laughs> Can they get it? Yes, Secret's not even gonna get an assist. Oh, catch. He's not even wanting to use Smite right there. Instead, oh. just gonna heal up and go back to his jungle and use his Smite <laughs> on something else, I guess. Or super, super has it. Yeah. He's just gonna recall. Okay, weird that you wouldn't use Smite right there, but. Perhaps he has a, a plan to smite a camp and then immediately gank, and he needs those two charges. Maybe. Immediately. Yeah, could just be wanting to leave that option open since he didn't feel the need to smite with Tom going all the way up for a gank in top lane. And oh boy. So much to talk about. <laughs> League of Legends, where the action is. <laughs> Have you seen Mad Max yet, Chobra? No, I haven't. That movie's really good. But I've seen the... Mario Kart Fury Road. <laughs> well, you uh, just taking culture and ruining it again, Chobra. Thank you so much. Thought I was pretty sweet. <laughs> Thought I got the gist of the movie now. <laughs> Tom here for gank and bottom. He does have his explosive cask, as we're seeing on screen right now. No ultimate from Secret. Of course, that wouldn't really help if Bang also got his at the same time. Uh, but SKT's pretty pushed up, so they're going to have to wait for it. So Tom's just going to go back. Not worth it when you know that the enemy's going to be farming all that time. 
Oh, this early game, man. This is <laughs> this is truly dull. It's, it's been a while since we. Well, we usually don't have two teams that are trying to scale, in right? Precisely the same way with very few viable gank options because there's just no kill pressure. Yeah. I mean, you have a barrier Azir in the mid lane, and then bottom you have Alistair Urgot. Well, that's not really going to kill anything in the first few minutes as they just trying to stack a tier up and do some harassment. And of course, with the tankiness coming in from this Nautilus, not really <laughs> something that's, the only person they can kill that anyone could probably kill is Rumble. Rumble, right. <laughs> I was gonna say that. His flash is down. So all eyes on Tom to bring us some action here. The first game of the day. They can't even fight over the dragon now that Spenu soloed it with their jungler. Yeah, well, SKT trying to set up for a gank, still in bottom, still trying to make use of that explosive cast. Secret gonna show up just for a short bit. They'll get information from that. They're trying to fake a roam right now, but there's so many wards from Spenu around the mid lane that they should have a good idea. Okay. Oh, there's a flash and the position reverser onto nuclear and the body some explosive cast and a knock up nuclear, just having zero control over his own champion. Yeah, you can't do that. Uh, basically, so if we look at the wards right now in the river, they knew they knew that they couldn't have been trying to roam or make a play on the mid lane, which left very limited options for what could have been going on right there. And so just waiting in that brush right when bang hit six allows him to get a pretty darn easy kill. Two flashes blown for it, but at the same time, Sol and Marin both canceling their TPs. Bit of an awkward situation, but definitely overly aggressive, especially to walk into lane all, pretty much alone like that. Yeah, Nautilus was behind him, but he seems to have overestimated a little bit the time it would take him to get there. Also, really good CC chain coming in from SKT to not take any chances. No, it's well executed for sure. Oh, Wolf showing up in the top lane, coming here for a big roam gank, and there's the knock up onto Soul Head, but all the way back. But Marin's kind of low, so he's kind of scared to jump right in. He does have Onslaught of Shadows, but he's still saving that. Tom showing up, Explosive Cast is down, so they're just gonna get a barrel onto Soul and back off. I mean, Marin had no health or mana right there. That was really unlikely to work. Now, they couldn't really have done anything else in that situation besides attempt to gank there, so it was smart from SK Telecom. Uh, Bang was going back to base to finish up his Mana Mune at the time, so. Uh, and there wasn't a dragon to take or anything, so you might as well just try and gank that top side, get some more wards down, but very low chance of that working. The best thing they did was get some knowledge on where catch was, and Tom will just continue farming that under turret while Marin heads back into lane with his newly completed Sander Hulk. Sasin gets a ward down. So they know exactly where that jungler is. So that was actually a good play from Sasin to get that deep vision in yeah. right after he knew Wolf was recalling it. He could see Tom in the top side. So not really a chance that anybody could be there. Just zips in with the whimsy. Yeah, so Spenny continuing to have that good vision. Um, of course, they did lose nuclear once, but that Kogma gets big. Either way, that one death won't really matter if we go to 40, 50 minutes. Not that I wish that upon us. <laughs> but it does seem likely <laughs> up to a point. <laughs> well, Spenu actually still with a little bit of a gold lead here in spite of that first blood. Just a little bit of CS advantage in some of these lanes so far, allowing them to pick that up. But I guess Katelikov's going to be fine with that. They've got the composition that can certainly deal with what Spenu is going to be throwing at them, so here comes Secret and Catch to try and make a play out of Easy Hoon and clear out some wards at the same time. But that's not really going to do a whole lot. Wolf taking a look right now as this dragon is about to spawn. SKT may not have the exact timer on this. Yeah, Spenu just trying to secure all the vision they can before the dragon spawns, and they have a lot of it around the dragon pit. Of course, SKT is pretty prepared. Easy Hoon doing a good job clearing that pink ward in the brush with a sand soldier. It's one thing that people, I think, underestimate about Azir's power in the professional scene. Certainly he's a great champion, but the fact that you can clear wards from that range, clear pink wards like that, yeah. is a huge advantage to controlling objectives. 
Yep, you can clear it so safely without yeah. your support having to go out into danger. And there's a flash forward from Secret. The ult goes on to Bang. He's locked down. Position reverse is just trying to be used to buy some time, but eventually Nuclear will pick up the kill. And exactly the same, the opposite thing happening there to Bang <laughs> that got done to him early on, playing very far forward on his birthday. Happy yeah. birthday, Bang. <laughs> Soul already coming down towards the Dragon Pit without using Teleport, trying to make use of that. But Marin pushing up really far into the tower to pressure him and make him pay for joining his team at the Dragon. It's huge that Spenu has already managed to get two Dragons during this game because their composition is going to be very scary with some of those later stacks in terms of the amount of siege they're going to be putting out. The damage to turrets as well as the movement speed is hugely important on a Juggernaut composition. So Marin going to use this opportunity to go ahead and take away a red buff with his Smite Hecarim, and there he goes. He's being as annoying as possible right there. Yeah, Marin's made some really good use of it. He proxy farm one of the waves too, to waste two waves at the tower, and Ezium going in onto Sasha and gets a nice Empress vibe backwards, but Wild Growth coming in. Those are some beautiful Azir mechanics. Just yeah. watching Ezium play the fluidity at which he can execute these combos is in my opinion, <laughs> unparalleled. I'm always impressed when I see him bend soldiers like that and yeah. be able to get away with some of these stunts. But Sasset able to ult himself and flash out, and Wolf just a little bit late on that realm, so they can't lock him up and punt him backwards to get the kill. And of course, the big benefit there is Flash now gone from Sasset, so we'll see if Tom tries to make a play in mid. It's still going to be hard to catch a Lulu, though, with the Whimsy and the Wild Growth when it comes back up. And Rumble already got the early home guard to get back to lane and to help with any further teleport joins for his team. And now, <laughs> more farm. <laughs> so exciting. Truly my favorite part of League of Legends. It's a pretty crucial part. Can't get the kills if you can't get the farm. That's not true. Yeah, Rabbit Star showed us that's not true. <laughs> His farming was horrid, but he claimed I farm champions. <laughs> and uh, he wasn't wrong. <laughs> well he also he also did retire relatively soon after. But Tom looking for an opportunity in top, not gonna find it though. And catch taking that time to regain some vision. I mean, Spender doing a good job of trying to gain vision whenever they have a chance. Tom does have explosive cast. Souls flashes down. And hey, catch. Nice to meet you. Just gonna knock up Tom. Tom's gonna chase him now. Souls so low that they're oh, not the explosive guy. They're just gonna nice. bait out the equalizer. Very well done. That by was SKT. a great bait from SK Telecom. That equalizer doing almost nothing right there, and that's one less tool. Soul has bang and. Secret going at it in the bottom side, but Wolf approaching Secret. No, they can't do this. <laughs> they already lost this up. trade. Yeah, Nuclear is <laughs> just beating down onto Wolf. He's knocked him down to 30% health. I mean, Bang missed his skill shot right there, and they were chasing after Secret anyway. That very tanky Nautilus. Sasin gets out traded in the mid lane, and Bang now finally. Wolf is getting really low. He does have his unbreakable will, but he still might get taken as a teleport comes down from still No equalizer, though, and Secret will get... Oh, not get the dredge line onto Bang. Nice flash. Yeah, easy hood there. Catch coming in with the Void Rush afterwards, and no one committing, but that's a TP advantage now for Marin, so he's going to have an easy time ganking that bottom lane, should he so choose. Secret doesn't have an ultimate. They're going to go after Soul first. Tom just camping this top side. But he does get seen by that ward and tri brush. Yeah, so you're just gonna chase him off, allow Marin to push up even more and Fort Soul to miss out on quite a bit of CS as two of them are still up in the top lane. No real need for Tom to move away from that other than to farm. And he's just gonna farm the Krugs, it looks like, in the top side anyway. Yeah, just a little bit of proxy farming there, trying to deny Soul as much as they can, punish him, even though he has been able to farm pretty well up until this point. And you do see Secret and Nuclear heading back to base. So Marin can definitely get a really good home guard gank in the bottom side now if Tom will go down there after getting the blue. And once we see the duo lane return from Spenu. Yep, Trinity Force finish for Nuclear. So he has that spike going for him a little bit. Uh, but we probably won't see any super aggression 
anyway. And Mari's just making Souls' life so miserable, taking a ton of damage from a simple trade right there. Yeah, uh, dropping the smite and continuing just to draw all this pressure <laughs> up. They really want to fight in this top side. Yeah, Tom's here too as Catch shows up towards the top side. Mar will spot him. I think Tom more. is really bored. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has nothing to do. There's the body slam onto Soul Explosive Cask. And hello, Mar jumps out on Son of Shadows to secure the kill. Although Soul had no flash, he just wanted to make sure he got the last hit. And the lane. Gets pushed up once again. It was a long time coming, that gank. Yeah, poor soul. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Try and get <laughs> the jungler up there by proxy farming as much as possible. I mean, it was a good pressure play from SK Telecom, and they played it out well. Uh, just having soul go back to turret and get knocked out. Yeah, I mean, it was over the course of like a level and a half right there. And whoa, Marin took some damage, but. Dragon's gonna be up in 30 seconds. Will Spin get the third one just as easily? Doesn't look like it. As well, Baron has the TP advantage for this dragon, so yeah. it'd be very difficult for Spin to take it as long as Tom starts moving down to that bottom side of the map. And Easy Hoon needs to get some more HP, however. He went for the Morello Nabokon, so not any magic resist to help deal with some of these trades coming in from Sasan. Sasan at least has that. A Fiend's Unholy Grail to mitigate some of the damage from his ear. And now a death cap completed. Man, Easy Hoon had a wow. lot of money. <laughs> well, that's how this game goes. Everyone goes back only for their core items. Building parts. It's a very relaxed game. Yeah, it's, it seems like it now. Right, Bang going for Black Cleaver. This is the Urgot build that we've been seeing the past few days. Makes sense. Everything an, an Urgot needs, HP, cooldown reduction, yeah. armor shred, and especially good in the early game when that flat armor penetration is so valuable. So, Spenny is going to try and do something right here. Teleport is back up for Soul now. Yep, both top players do have teleport, but we do have Varn going back home to prep that home guard for himself. So Spenny is also going to back off. They took a little bit poke right there at the Dragon. They didn't want to take the risk. They don't want to let the dragon reset, but it looks like Spen will have to give that up. So Marin also not going hope after getting that signal and just continuing to dominate Spenu's jungle. He's a jungle dominator right now. Raptors take it away. And Soul starting to move into the mid lane, but he does get seen by the ward at the Raptor brush. And he's gonna walk down into the bottom side. Meanwhile, Marin going to take yet another camp, taking the enemy Krugs. Tom grabs the speed shrine from the scuttle crab. So SK Telecom just delaying this as long as possible and taking every advantage while Soul isn't in lane, getting no experience and no gold right now. Yeah, Marn's two levels ahead of Soul. That's gonna hurt quite a bit. And there is a ward for Marn to teleport into right at the dragon or nearby. SKT's all setting up for this dragon fight. Sasin finally coming in from the middle. There's a dredge light onto Tom. Can they get him? There's a whimsy onto Tom. He's also been polymorphed, and so he goes down quickly to nuclear with the burst from the train force. Marin shows up with home guards, but nothing to do right away. Marin now has the dragon leashed onto him, uh, but he's all alone in that pit as Easy Yoon gets zoned out by Secret. Catch and Marin going at it. The dragon going pretty low. Who's going to win the smite wars there? Oh, Marin gets the dragon, and he gets out with Lost Lot of Shadows. As Catch also gets caught by Wolf, but that's going to be the reverse as Spenu all joins in on that fight and gets the kill for Catch. Yeah, now they're going to be able to take the turret here in the bottom side as well. Very low. Bang trying to clear out that way, but Ooh, there's the equalizer. equalizer onto him. There's a knockup by Catch, but it's taking his teammates a little bit of time to join up. Heal being used for the movement speed, and Bang will be able to back out as both Zol and Catch are slightly low on HP. So, actually, right there, Spenu does take some nice advantages. They lose the mid lane tower in the process, however, as Easy Hoon just goes ahead and shoves that wave straight through the turret and into the tier two. So a little bit of mispositioning there from Tom at the start of that fight. Got caught out, but Sam, uh, Sam sorry, I keep doing it. Uh, Spenu actually taking advantage of that and catching someone out with their speed before the dragon actually went down. Oh, Easy Hoon's yeah. gonna get two towers right here. Yeah, Ouch. Easy Hoon making it worth it for SKT on the other side, though. Taking two towers. Some of the CS lost in top lane, too, for Spenu. So. They, they've lost an insane amount of CS on turrets this game. Spenu is just getting slowly punished here by SK Telecom. Uh, that rumble just walking all the way across the map with the teleport up. Simply not worth it in this instance when you have to play defensively. 
we take a look at this replay right here, uh, as Catch and Soul start off, but of course they are in vision. Tom, not playing too respectfully when there could have been a ward in that brush right there, but they're still waiting for that teleport to come in. Tom just gets CC'd and whimsied right there. And now the poke comes in from the other side. But look at how well Easy Hoon controls this choke right there yeah. with the Sand Soldiers. There's no way to rapidly get around and Catch will find himself with Marin in that Dragon Pit in a bit of a smite duel right there. And Marin just gonna use that Rampage and his smite to He's secure two it. levels ahead too, so yes, that, that helps a that huge time. <laughs> does help quite a bit. But yeah, I mean, you know, even if Spenu had gotten that dragon, like you said, with all the CS they lost, didn't really seem oh. to be worth it. Secret just gets completely caught over the wall with the Onslaught of Shadows from Mar, and there's a teleport. It's, oh, it is actually going to be in time as Secret still survives and Cat shows up. There's a Harpoon onto Mar, and can they get the knockoff? And there's the Equalizer right in his path back to the tower. Mar taking a lot of damage, but a beautiful explosive cast will separate Spenu's chase. That's a really good response by Spenu, though. SK Telecom now here with Bang. Trying to get some poke damage out, clear out this wave as fast as they can with some of these barrels. And they're going to be able to pull it out at the end. Wolf is there to prevent any kind of turret dive, but Spenu, nice, very nice reaction. But they find themselves, they or they will find themselves, however, with that TP disadvantage once again in a couple of minutes. And they're not able to get a kill, not able to get the objectives either. But they had a good read, Marin now galloping into the bottom lane for some more farm. And you really see these large farm gaps opening up in the solo lanes just because of Sasan and Soul's time roaming, as well as Marin playing in the enemy jungle so well. Yeah, Marin is playing a very busy game all on his own, making sure he stays rich. And Soul perhaps prioritizing that TP a little bit too much simply for uh, grouping up with his teammates. Yeah, it's just you have to know what the value of some of these roams are. And so Soul making mistakes, which, you know, we can expect. He's a newer player in the scene, certainly not yeah. as veteran as Marin. But in terms of that gold experience lost, like you're saying, Chobra, it's translated into about 30 CS and two levels at the moment. And all those CS are not equal either. The number of jungle camps with the Saber that Marin has gotten means that gold lead is probably more in the range of realistically 40 to 50 normal minions. Yeah, and another tower taken in bottom lane by Marin. Really taking over the map pretty much on his own for the mid game here as SKT also begins to ramp up. Azir now with another needlessly large rod. And Bang with the finished Black Cleaver on top of Warden's Mail. All right, well, pings are going down on the Baron right now. SK Telecom starting to contemplate that here at 25 minutes. They only have a 4K gold lead, so it might be a little bit difficult, especially with their uh, relatively slow Baron speed in this game. Yeah. I love the fact that Morin just went ahead, even though there's only one damage threat, didn't go for the, for the Trinity Force here instead. He realizes that most of the late game damage is going to be coming off of nuclear anyway. Frozen Heart, extremely effective at cutting down Kog'Maw's DPS. Yeah, now ramping up to finish his MR2. Already has that Spectre's Cowl. Of course, had the Merc Treads and extra health from the Cinder Hulk also for Mar. He's going to be pretty tanky just in time to face off against Benu's damage should they go into a full on team fight. Easy to his farm is. Actually, extremely high, 282 at 26 minutes into this game. That's so well above the standard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's been doing very well, taking some of these raptor camps. Also, considering that Tom has been active mostly in the enemy jungle on the top side of the map, so he's been able to get a lot more jungle camps than normal. But I was just looking at his itemization here for 27 yeah. minutes. It's like <laughs> death cap and echo already done. And he doesn't have any kills or assists, so just doing work with the global gold from those four turrets. And he did get he did get the gold from the isolation gold from the two towers in oh, mid lane as true, well. Yeah. So that's a lot of money. Well, here goes Spenu trying to set up for the dragon once again. They have the timer on it. They're going to start it right away uh, as nuclear yeah, does join up with Sasin. So all of Spenu joined right in front of the dragon pit. Marin is at home charging up his home guard boots. 
It, when's he gonna teleport? Dragon is already at half out. There's Marin all the way in the back. Secret sees it. You see it with the ward coming in, and the dragon does go to Tom. Tom steals oh. the dragon right from under Spenu, and the fight starts as Catch does get the wild growth on him. Nuclear on the outside, but he's exhausted. Not that much damage coming in, being used onto Wolf. Tom getting zoned a little bit. Bang still have full health, but easy and trying to kite and zone as much as possible. Nuclear chasing up with that whimsy. Oh, and the help picks, but there's the position reverser from Bang. Bang now separated from his team as Nuclear continues on a massacre against SKT. A double kill and living with a sliver of health eventually goes down to the damage over time from Urgot. Yeah, the damage over time actually finishing that one off. And but hardly anyone on Spenu actually dying right there. Four or three players rather getting out with just slivers of HP. Easy who not wanting to commit at the end of that fight. And they're still looking for damage right here. Marin now getting a phage as we take a look at how this engage happened. Wolf starts with a three-man knockup, and they're going to combo this into a three-man fear there from Hecarim. But Hecarim gets knocked up himself by that wild growth at the back line. And look at that equalizer. Very well placed there by Sol. SK Telecom taking a pretty huge amount of damage from that ability. Wolf will die. And then the retreat begins right here. Bang thinks they can turn it around by getting nuclear. And the flash actually from nuclear prevents him from getting hit by that Emperor's Divide. And so he is able to escape, or not quite escape, <laughs> damage over time. We'll take him out. Yeah, also took that one end. hit, extra hit from the Sand Soldier as he tried to finish off Bang for the kill. But still a pretty good fight from Spenu. Yeah, Spenu's been playing this composition well. Certainly something that SK Telecom has been lacking is they keep getting engaged on before all members can be there. So Spenu is doing a good job of pulling the trigger and creating these picks and fighting on their terms. Yep. But SKT is still ahead in goal thanks to all the pushing and farming by Ezeun and Marin. And of course, having taken those two dragons to even out in dragon stacks also. So Spenu no longer has that advantage anymore. And SKT. Contemplating Baron, or at least trying to go for a bait as Catch. Uh, not checking with his Tremor since he is going to get knocked up and he will tunnel out as Tom tries to chase them down with an explosive cast. Yeah, not taking that much damage, however, but still only three kills for SKT this game. They really need to get some more damage in this composition. And I mean, they with a locket on the enemy team already. Getting a Void Sap. Uh oh, Catch coming here with Soul and Emperor Divide having to be used, but he's going to get knocked up and an Equalizer coming down. Soul takes the kill against Easy Hoon. Yeah, uh, Easy Hoon. A little bit dangerously alone in the river right there. Now, will Spenu actually try and force a Baron out of this? He, Easy Hoon is the main damage source at the moment. Marin just has a Phage right now, and bang. A Black Cleaver and a Frozen Heart, so not a lot of armor penetration. But he's just going to go at it. Baron was bottom lane. He's quickly making his way across the map. Baron going down somewhat quickly, but Spenu does have to focus a little bit on keeping SKT zone. Explosive cast is also ready from Tom, but he's taking a lot of damage from Nuclear as Spenu tries to turn it around. Can he get the kill onto Tom? Oh, he's going to use the locket of the Iron Solari to keep himself alive. Wolf also using a breakable will to ensure his escape. So Spenu all have been at least drawn out from the Baron pit. Now Easy Hoon is back up. Spenu doesn't have the time to go for the Baron. Yes, or they can keep no, doing yeah, it. They're still going to do it. Tom has no HP right now. Now they have to worry about the smite from Marin. Again, he's level 17 already. Catch yeah. only 14, so this is a bit risky. Onset of Shadows is ready, but they're trying to keep them poked out. Oh, Bang doing some nice poke onto Soul. A couple of their teammates, and SKT will stop the Baron attempt as Easy and finally joins up for the damage. SKT playing with fire a little bit right there, but they managed to make up for Easy Hoon's mistake, getting caught out right by the Dragon. The Dragon up in another couple of minutes. Well, this has been a dangerous game from SK Telecom. SK Telecom just not grouping up particularly well in this one. And it's been Spenu who's been setting up the fights. They've been the ones with the positioning on Dragon early, and that positioning has done them a lot of favors. And you know, this was a problem that we saw from SK Telecom and MSI as well, particularly in the finals against EDG. Very late to set up on Dragons, and they try and continuously fight Dragons even when they don't have the positioning that they need or even the vision they need either right. to go in on those, and Spenu is punishing it.
Yeah, nuclear gonna go home for some more items and a full stack of mana to return. Sasin also coming back after some buys. 0-0-7 score for Sasin and 0-0-8 for Secret. So really doing their job on the team. Last Whisper now completed for Nuclear. He is going to do some good damage even onto Marn at this point. So Spenu are all prepped for their composition. Just going to keep Nuclear safe and he, he can keep putting that damage out. One by one, SKT will be whittled down. And Soul 2 building into a Rylice right now. That is going to be an extremely important item for Soul because he's just going to provide an AoE slow and he can just sit there with his Flame Spitter on and Zonia's and give by even more time for this Kog'Maw to go to work. So yeah. very, very important power spike in this composition once that is finished. Yep. SKT now trying to keep Spenu from going all out onto the Dragon when it spawns, trying to keep an eye on Baron. Soul. Uh, yeah, just having some fun with Marn. We'll get some damage down. He has caught up mostly in experience, of course, now. There's not much higher you can go at level 17 for Marn. A nice push in bottom lane for Spenu. That minion wave is going to slowly be wasted for SKT. GP coming in. And Spenu. Gonna go ahead and start the dragon. Soul's already here, but here's a teleport again from Marin. Now this time, just about in time. Secret will keep him zoned, but the dragon's still going. Who will pick it up? Will it be Tom once again? Tom picks it up once again, and a nice knockup from Wolf, and Spenu still wants to fight Secret all the way up front with the explosive cast. Nice and Emperor's Divide will keep them back as SKT simply wants to avoid this for a little bit, but Nuclear gets caught with the position reverser into an onslaught of shadows, and he goes down immediately. SKT now turning the fight as three members are eliminated as Saucen gets slowed from Bang. And the Emperor is trying to chase forward. Bang actually just flashing forward to keep that slow on with his shield. He's not going to hit the last one. It was a little you bit can't. short. You're not going to chase this <laughs> Lulu down. I'm sorry. Saucen has way too much AP with this. Whimsy right now. And here comes oh. Marin. Hello, Sasin. All the way on the other side of the map. Sasin's still trying to make some form of an escape. Going through the tower with that speed and the help picks. And there's another Glitter Lance, but Marin is going to have none of that. Shoves the Lulu back into tower. <laughs> Meanwhile, Soul picks up a solo kill onto Easy Hoon, but he looks like he's going to pay for that as Bang just keeps him on lockdown with his own slow. Uh, but we are seeing Rexley actually come all the way through with his ultimate, so SKT <laughs> will stop that chase. <laughs> Catch with his own little <laughs> smile there. Wow. Well, Marin has his eyes on the red buff, but that's not going to be something that he's probably going to get. So finally, SK Telecom gets the fight that they're looking for, just being able to catch out that Kog'Maw. And the fact that Kog'Maw used the flash and still died is absolutely crucial because Nuclear needs that flash up if he wants to play uh, in the proper positioning for this Juggernaut composition. Oh, Marin gets caught as he tries to port back. He was right in a ward. And there's Seeker with a dredge line as the Onslaught uh, Shadows goes forward. Explosive cast not going to do too more, much work to help equalize it. Finishing off as Nuclear gets one last hit onto Marin and Spenu not going to pursue any further. They are right at Baron Pit. Soul is a little bit low on health, no TP for him. So SK Telecom again in the position of getting caught out and then having to defend against a possible Baron right here. Looks like Nuclear just going to waltz through this turret. You can see that damage really starting to add up on this Kog'Maw at the moment. Yeah, I mean, they wait for Marin to come back up, but Marin has his TP down. Soul has to respond to this slow push minion wave. On the bottom side, no TP of his own, so they're not actually going to be putting pressure down onto the Baron, but Spenu's nearly caught up in terms of gold at the moment. The difference incredibly negligible at this late point of the game. Yeah, if you can keep it at about 1,000, 35 minutes into the game, you're pretty good to go. And Soul, he's waiting for his teleport, but he's going to make sure he can uh, clean nice. up that bottom QSS lane. finish for nuclear. That is huge. So Rylai's and QSS done now for Spenu. They're in a really good position this game to deal with what SK Telecom is throwing at them at the moment. And Marin's still struggling to finish his Trinity Force. He's got to get that damage to be able to deal with Kogma. Yep, they won't really get that dream combo anymore from that last fight with the QSS. Uh, but still many more ways to keep nuclear at bay or separated from the team. See if SKT is up for the task. 
I mean, you can say that, you know, the Juggernaut comp is hard to play and therefore maybe a little bit too difficult for some of the newer teams. But at the same time, it's, uh, you know, you just need a couple team fights to really make it work. And they have been just having that man advantage the entire time. SK yeah. Telecom taking very risky backs, uh, walking into unwarded areas, and they're really paying for it right here. Pretty sloppy play overall, but Spenu certainly doing better than we saw them earlier this week or even in the qualifiers. Yeah. Soul, of course, lost a lot of CS because of the way he joined up, but at least he's prioritizing the team fights over securing all the CS uh, down into the late game, so it should work out pretty well from here on out for Spenu. Teleport not up yet for either top laner, but it should be up at pretty much the same time. Marin gonna make sure he goes back home first as the bottom lane is pushing up in favor of SKT. Spenu is still all towards the top side of the map, trying to vie for a chance at Baron or at least to catch someone off guard near Baron. Well, Tom's really been the hero too. Those last two dragons are probably not ones that should have been picked up by SK Telecom. So catch not actually finishing them off with the smite and Tom grabbing them means that we could be in a very different game where Spenu already has four dragon stacks right now. But instead, dragon advantage surprisingly going to SK Telecom. Yeah, nuclear starting to be that annoying Kogma zipping forward with the whimsy and the help picks. And then just trying to get one or two hits in, and then backing off. So will SK Telecom actually get the angle right here? Certainly, if they can be in the river first, having the zone control that they've got with the Azir and the Gragas would be highly advantageous. They can basically just cover those chokes and not even give Spendu an option for getting into the river in the first place. But they're still trying to clear out these sideways, doing a little bit of jungling right now. I mean, Bang is going after Crop. Not sure that's the best use of his time, <laughs> 25 seconds before this dragon spawns. He's gonna get it though, and then head back into the mid lane, so it looks like it won't be punished too much, but his team just not quite there yet with the wards. They've got 15 seconds to really clear out some of this vision secret there as well. Yeah, SKT definitely has a little bit more right around the Baron pit. And they will go in and take that Scuttle Crab too. Five seconds before it spawns, so SKT has the advantage in setting up. Easy Un also now has his Void Staff and then a Spectre's Cow to defend against some of that long range AP damage that's going to come in from Soul and Sasin. And everyone here now, all 10 players, Easy Un making sure to get some vision. Marn taking quite a bit of damage from Soul, but Soul's going to have to back out as he overeats and Wolf chases up. They're going to even out just a bit, and SKT is going to take that as a cue to start the dragon. Uh, Bang is having to walk all the way around the far side of the dragon pit, though, so it's going to take some time for him to join up. Catch trying to make sure he can secure this one, but Soul is actually going to get caught by Wolf, and he has to flash back out. The dragon has been reset for a short time. Catch wanting to go back into it, but Marn's there with Tom. Those might on SKT, and of course, Marn will pick that one up as Secret gets caught. Nuclear Steer in the back. He's not going to get hit by the explosive cast. Meanwhile, Onslaught of Shadows chases down onto Soul. SKT should get the kill onto the Rumble as Nuclear is still doing free damage onto Tom. They're all grouped up on the side of SKT, and now it's Nuclear's time to shine as he chases three members of SKT. Wolf super low. Catch flashing forward to try Barnes to get some CC. TP. He's TP. But Marn's coming back in. Easy Un's also at full health. He Leaps forward, and there is a healthy pony coming towards Nuclear and Sasin. Uh, but Martin's taking quite a bit of damage, too. So he's going to have to, he's actually going to have to back out of there. Nuclear's low on mana, so he's also going to back out that of there. was such an extended team fight <laughs> that we saw around that objective. Marin thinking he could actually get back in, but Nuclear still too high HP and having that life seal as well. So let's take a look at how this happened. I mean, they basically just bursted it down. Pretty easy for SK Telecom to secure that dragon. Uh, Secret taking a lot of poke damage, and Marin just chasing off Soul in the top side, waiting for that Zonias, and then immediately deciding to recall after that. Oh, we missed it. Easy Hoon actually had a really nice Azir play right there, setting up with a couple of soldiers and then comboing well onto catch, but they couldn't quite kill him. And at the end, he decides to go onto nuclear right here. Not the best choice. Could have actually gone after catch and secured a kill. Yeah, nice play by catch, knocking up Marin too as he comes towards nuclear, giving nuclear a chance to start the kite backwards. Yeah, eliminating that damage too from the speed mm -hmm. boost. That was a good play. SKT now with four dragons. 
And we see Sasen also looking to get a Luden's Echo here for some additional AOE damage. Easy Hoon has decided to grab a Cowl here to deal with the double AP threat as well as that percent HP damage from Kogma. Yeah, so Nuclear definitely seems to be up for the job. I mean, he didn't get it by the explosive cask. He kept his distance this time around, of course, has that QSS on top. Spanish composition, very scary right now in the late game, though. I mean, dealing with a Juggermaw, this advanced in terms of damage is quite challenging, especially once that QSS is down and your answer in terms of the Urgot wasn't used particularly well earlier to shut it down when you had more of an opportunity. Yeah, he's doing a lot right now, just on his own, really. And Sasin will start to do quite a bit, too, as all these damage items are completed on that Lulu. GA now done for Marin, actually. So he's already hit that six items, of course, having a lot of money. He's past the flame horizon, 424 to 304. Wow. And I mean, honestly, SK Telecom shouldn't be having this much trouble, but it's just getting caught out time and time again this game that has really set them back and eliminated the advantages that they built up earlier on. As well as Spenu's decisiveness, uh, they have no qualms about using that speed to engage before the teleport channel can complete. Yeah. Spenu definitely has been playing pretty well, given the circumstances. All right, well, we'll see if uh, Nuclear has a chance to go back and finish his item there as SKT actually starts the Baron. No vision here for Spenu. They're gonna spot it now. And that's enough to keep SKT at bay as Soul charges towards the wrong base in bottom lane as he tries to escape from Marin. He's gonna get caught with the Onslaught of Shadows and he's just gonna teleport out now that the ult is down. But that is a teleport down for Spenu. Yeah, Marin has his down at least for the moment though, but in a minute or so it will allow them to put a little bit of extra pressure on that Baron. And there's the Void Rush coming in to make sure that they have some presence right now over that objective because they don't know where Marin has gone. And that will, in fact, incite SK Telecom to start doing this. They're not going to be able to do it particularly quickly. Yeah, but it's going down at a decent speed, and all five members are here. Nuclear does get a check on it, sight on all three, but there's an explosive cast to keep Catch at bay as Bang finishes. The Baron Wolf is caught by Catch. He'll go down to Soul, actually, from long range with the damage over time. Just trying to poke right there, make sure that there isn't going to be any pursuit. Marin running interference from the side. Soul and Nuclear looking to attack this mid lane turret and forcing SK Telecom to take the long way around some Kog'Maw ults raining down as SKT clears a ward, but the wave just wasn't there to put the damage down onto this turret. But Spenu's still moving forward and they have to be very wary about, wow, that tower wow. goes down so fast right now. Yeah, I mean, easy to try to set up a nice clear for a catch. Gets caught by Marin, but he's gonna be able to make a nice escape as Marin tries to charge forward. He's gonna get blocked by Secret. Will Secret have to be sacrificed as Soul shows up on the side? No, he's just gonna dredge line out. And Marin going all the way to now zone out Spenu on the other side of the map. Yeah, has that Iron Elixir as well. It's a good <laughs> pickup right here because as he goes into the back of the team, it's gonna help everyone else be able to reach that back line. Yeah. And now we're going to go for Dragon number five. 30 seconds left, Marin's TP is up. He wants to clear out this top wave and set his minions pushing giving his team a little bit of an extra advantage. Tom slowly working his way through that scuttler. Easy Hoon wants some Raptors for himself. Yep. Scuttler going in favor of SKT and Spenu. I mean, this pretty much has to kind of be the do or die fight here. Uh, you don't want to fight them with Baron either, but what choice do you have? Marin setting up for his TP. And, and he's actually, he's actually just gonna just run. Gonna run. Forward. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. Didn't want to take any chances in some senses. I mean, he feels that he's pretty strong, which he is. He's very tanky too. And Spenu actually keeping the dragon leashed. I, I think they might just want to try to buy as much time as possible. IE is completed on nuclear. Nuclear could try to get just a ton of damages. And they are aware that Marn is looking for the flank here. If he gets a good flank and an onslaught of shadows, the entire thing just goes down the drain for Spenu. Catch taking some damage from the dragon. SKT definitely wants this dragon leashed. Oh. SKT can wait as long as they need to. They have huge waves developing in the side lanes already. They've prepped them very well for this fight. 
So the back and forth can continue, and they're going to be the winners in the end. Yeah, and Azir doing some damage onto Secret and Cash, pushing them back so that Marin can set up a nice zone with three Sand Soldiers from Eun. And there's a flash forward from Catch and Secret, but they're both going to be knocked back by the Empress Fight. Nuclear doing a ton of damage from the side. He's going to take down Tom and Marin. Took a little bit too long to get in here. There's Johnson Shadows, but not going to hit Nuclear. Nuclear is going to chase him down. He's going to chase him out of the fight, but Nuclear can't find the next target. Dragon still hasn't gone down. Four members alive on each side. Secret is very Marin's low. coming back in. He's got TP. Oh, no wonder he saved that as he charges oh forward. My. Catch and Secret are really low. There's a really big pony. He's going for, towards Sasin, and he just gets knocked down to 25% now. Nuclear gets caught, but there's the QSS. He dodges the damage from Easy, and he's still chunking down Marin, but it's all up to him on his own with Sasin. He can't do much. The last hero of Spenu will be chased down by four members of SKT, not even going to be able to trade. Oh, maybe he gets the kill onto Easy in here. He will <laughs> get the kill onto Easy Un. Easy Catch is back, baby. <laughs> He's back to try and steal this dragon away. Well, uh, they may, they're just going to go for it. They know Catch is on the outside. Wolf just looking to zone him out Marin's while he can. Marin is doing blue buff. <laughs> SKT just has no regard for Catch. They're like, what are you going to do? You lost Dragon twice. We're not afraid of you. Waiting for Marin's flat, or uh, right, smite. smite. There is. Up. So catch going in. Can he win the smite war? He's, oh. <laughs> oh, he flashes back. But he's <laughs> not going to get it. Oh, catch. This game will haunt you for the rest. <laughs> I mean, three dragons that you've lost with smite war. <laughs> he's just having oh, a nice chuckle well, about it. What can he do? They played well this game overall. Yeah even though it does look like they're not going to be able to take this one home with that fifth Dragon stack going on to SK Telecom. But SK Telecom having a, given a run for their money right here, actually. So yeah. Spenu really stepping up in this game. And take a look at this fight, very extended fight one more time. So catch and Secret try to get onto Easy Hoon. Easy Hoon will flash back and use that Emperor's Divide. Really good equalizer again. And takes down Tom as SK Telecom just trying to keep, can maintain a presence on this dragon, but there's really not a whole lot Hecarim can do. Hecarim has been kited out very effectively by this Spenu team composition, but the fact that Marin saved his port right there turned out to be very influential. Yeah, and you know, just the fact that he can get away so quickly that no one's going to pursue him, so he has the time to go back and pour it back into the fight. He's done that twice already in this game. And the Emperor's Divide also keeping Nuclear at bay. Tom goes in for the stun, and Marin's going to go in. Onslaught Shadows will not hit with the flash coming in for Nuclear. Tom taking a lot of damage. He gets pulled back under the tower. Secret will go down to Azir, but Nuclear's still alive and healthy. And whoa, Catch comes in with a two-man knockup, but he's just going to get position reversed and stuck under that turret with nothing to do. Not no sure you want to engage while well, that is your turret is there, but... <laughs> Uh, he did actually prevent SK Telecom from taking an inhibitor because look at the waves that they've got to deal with right now. They're wow. actually going to lose a turret themselves, so not really much of anything gained by SK Telecom besides yet more farm for this gigantic <laughs> Hecarim. So he can buy all his items again. Just replace my new ones. Sorry, my Guardian's Angel. <laughs> Looks like there's a chip on it. <laughs> Replacement, please. Wolf going to get zoned out as Spenu tries to make something of this top lane too. It does have half damage. Yeah, that's just going to go down pretty quickly to the Kogma and Lulu. Spenu's still keeping up a fight and Baron's up in 30 seconds. This is the point in the game where actually having that Cinder Hulk is really terrible. <laughs> Ultra late game. Just not going to be the best item here. I mean, it gets you there, but... Well, with, with the amount of gold that Marin's going to have, maybe you'll we'll see something else coming out from him. Would it be too surprised? It does make your summoner spell useless, so is uh, the problem. That's true. Well, you can well, still use it to secure objectives, but you're not going to be able to use it in the team fights. Yeah, and that Sorry, is a bit of pretty a nice against yeah. uh, the Kogma. All right, well, uh, Marin looking for a little bit of a flank here, but Catch has the better sight onto Marin and uh, Nuclear is just going to sidestep that on of Shadows and Catch comes in. There's Naka Marin. Is he going to go down? Catch is caught in the midst of the other members but there's a nice equalizer but Ezium pushes him back with the Emperor's Divide. Gets some good damage and Spenu will have to back off. 
Now, are they going to go for the Baron off of this? Marin is low, has those home guards, can join the rest of his team pretty rapidly as he zips out of the fountain. Now, Spenu yeah. wants to try and force the mid lane so that... Ooh, looks like it might work. Yeah, that's a good call right there, just to get them off the Baron when they can't really contest it. And Marin and... Oh, Mars actually going to get caught, but no, he's not going to get hit by the dredge lane, so Sassen's going to have to wait until his teammates can help him out. Yeah. Sassen yep. has no armor right now. He doesn't have a Zonia's, yes, so. so he's taking a lot of damage. I like the fact that Marin keeps going after Sassen in these fights because he can mm -hmm. just take out that massive chunk with the physical damage, and if he's lucky, force the wild growth uh, onto Sassen himself so that they yeah. can turn onto the Kog'Maw just a bit later. SK Telecom wants this Baron. They're going to keep going for it. 13 seconds, but Void Rush is up. And Spenu is all going to be joined up here except for Rek'Sai. Catch. But not too many options. No tunnels in the Baron pit. Either Secret's just going to go on to Wolf. They're going to try to bait them out of it. And yeah, they have disengaged from the Baron, but Secret taking so much damage. Nuclear trying to keep Tom low enough that SKT can't continue the Baron. And Teleport is up for Marin, though, so he's going to port back for sure. Tom also going back home. And Spenu has bought time for Catch to come, while Secret will now be sitting out on the bench. <laughs> I like how now that we've scaled into the late game, these team fights are just continuous. It's basically never-ending <laughs> fights. Welcome to Dominion. No. Where the team fights never end. What's a Dominion? <laughs> where the team fights never had Monty. <laughs> you wouldn't know. You haven't played it. <laughs> no one's played it, Chobra. No one. I've casted a number of games on Dominion Monty. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't played it as much either. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit, I just cast you're, it. You're talking about <laughs> three years ago at this point. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Well, easy here, going for the distortion. Oh enchantment. yeah, there's Marin going for Sasan again. Onslaught of Shadows didn't hit though, so Marin doesn't have that valuable ultimate, but he does have a Guardian's Angel and a ton of health. So <laughs> I like how Secret has a random its omen now. That's the point that we are in this game, Jobra. The support <laughs> as an omen. Well, we might even go further. 55 minutes in, and SKT definitely has a lead. It's just that there's a well-protected Kog'Maw on the other side, and Spenu actually just going to turn onto this Baron, it looks like. They can do it relatively quickly, thanks to the Kog'Maw, but SKT is all here. Mar looking for the flank again. Catch taking some damage from the Baron, but he's pretty healthy. Secret actually gets zoned out all on his own. Easy and will chase him forward. Marin is behind the entire team of Spenu, so they're just caught in the sandwich between the members of SKT. Catch will tunnel out. And here comes Nuclear, doesn't have that QSS anymore, and he's gonna get knocked back by the Explosive Flask. He has to flash away. There's a Wild Growth, and Catch trying to buy enough time, but Nuclear has Marn to deal with. He's trying to first take down that pony. The Guardian's Angel will not be popped yet, as easy and takes down Soul. 70 seconds for that rumble, as Secret also gets chased down. Nuclear goes a little too far forward for the kill. Onto Bang, and easy and gets an easy triple by the end of that fight, and that should be the game for SKT. Yeah, that QSS was blown really early in that fight, and the nice thing, at least for Urgot, is even when the enemy has a QSS, you at least get tanky from your ultimate. Doesn't take away the self-buff stats that they have. Catch trying to uh, eliminate this minion wave. Oh, Marin's like, play. this is my trick. <laughs> You're not allowed to do this. <laughs> and it does not gonna matter. There's a huge minion wave in the top side as well, and yeah, with seconds. how fast Azir is able to take down these towers as we look at Easy Hoon in all his glory on your screen. <laughs> Should be uh, the game right here with such a long timer and such a huge minion wave. SK Telecom not playing the cleanest game, but they eventually grind it out as hard <laughs> <laughs> catch. <laughs> catch. <laughs> That's great. That is just gold right there. It pops pops right. right into it. He's just going to try to stay alive until the end of the game. Oh, he's going to go into the tunnel again as the game ends. And SKT takes the victory in game number one. Well, SK Telecom still showing some weakness in terms of Dragon setup that we saw at MSI. That was a, something that really hurt them, especially against Fnatic, I feel. But we saw it a little bit in the finals as well. Yeah. So not really being on top of that objective. and. To Spenu's credit, 
playing well with the vision, uh, collapsing before SK Telecom could get all five members there and getting into the late game with the Juggernaut. Definitely the best performance we've seen from them. Yeah, and I mean, you can tell by the smiles on their face. It was a tough game, but they put up a really good fight, did what they could given the situation. And at certain points, it looks like they might be able to start pushing for the victory, but SKT pulls through at the end. And of course, Easy just constantly farming.